KPRC Channel 2. This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. And if you want to, you can sit in front of your TV 24-7 and watch Trump impeachment stuff. Depositions, leaks about depositions, opposition to depositions, bombshell testimony, say Democrats. Nothing to see here, say Republicans. What in the world is going on? Thankfully, you don't have to sort it through yourself. Dr. Brandon Roddinghouse, University of Houston, <laughs> political science professor is here this morning to help us out. Thank you for being here. My pleasure, as always. A lot is going on here. This impeachment inquiry, there's a lot going on almost every day yeah. in terms of uh, conversation, a dizzying amount of news coming from yeah. Washington, D.C. Uh, the impeachment inquiry, the latest that's been happening there with uh, the, the depositions behind closed doors, what has been the most important bullet points for you in this impeachment inquiry process so far? I, to me, the bullet points are the, the sides are trying to find their own footing to say what they think this means, right? Mm -hmm. Democrats are trying to say this is a legitimate inquiry into this very serious issue about the quid pro quo with Ukraine, whereas the Republicans want to say and want to set up the fact that this is basically uh, a process which is flawed, and they want to be able to highlight the fact that they're not being involved. So the kind of bum rush that they got into the secure facility in the right. Capitol right. this week shows that they're trying to make that happen. Well, and, and on top of that, I mean, I get the optics were to show that, you know, we're being kept out and we want to be kept in. The yeah. reality is that there are a lot of Republicans on all of those committees who are in part of those right. depositions anyway, correct? Right. A lot of this is just for show, but that's part of the theater of Washington. The key fact to remember is that the House has full capacity to be able to investigate any way that they want to. So they can decide to do it in secret or not. It really will come to whether or not they impeach, number one. Number two, what do they impeach him on? Mm -hmm. That's really the question. It could be Ukraine, but it could be more. Well, they have said that they're going to make this. This is all going to be mm -hmm. uh, uh, public at some point. Right. It's almost like this part is a like grand jury then the next thing yes. is to put it out there. Let's talk about the, the, the conversation between President Trump and the president of Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, it looks like that's, that's the most problematic part of all of this. Yes. Um, the, the administration says no quid pro quo, right. uh, but the acting ambassador to Ukraine who put out this 15-page yeah. opening statement, right. A lot of credibility with what he had to say. So now yeah. they're kind of changing the no quid pro quo to, well, maybe yeah. the process, or maybe if it was, it's not rising to impeachment. What do you make of that? That's concept? right. Yeah, I, th th there's definitely a lot of evidence there, and there's a lot of smoke. That doesn't mean there's fire, but certainly it's going to be something that people are going to try to look into more closely. The other fact, I think, is that, that Republicans are really worried that this is going to bleed over into the elections. And clearly the fact that this is still an issue on the front burner is going to create some political problems for them. In many of these districts where you've got swing voters who are worried that President Trump is doing things he shouldn't do. So there's a lot of smoke there, but obviously the question is what they impeach him on and whether or not the Senate bites on it. Well, and the reason uh, that the uh, Democrats have the House control now is because of the big gains they made in 2016. So right. I can understand why they would be concerned about that. Okay. Yeah. Within two weeks, the landscape in the Middle East changed. Yes. The president had a conversation with the president of, of uh, Turkey. And the next thing you know, um, the declaration has been made now. The president says that um, the, the, the troops will be removed. Russia is now able to move into that vacuum. Yes. Which now creates a situation where the president is speaking to the nation, said, you know, it's, it's quite a bit different. He painted a really positive picture on what's all that's happening here because now the United States is out. Russia is now in on that vacuum. Yes. Bottom line is people may quarrel with the process, but a lot of people who voted for him wanted him in because he said he was going to pull the troops out. That's right. This is the America First strategy that people voted for, and he's essentially giving him that. I'd say this is a qualified win for the president. I mean, he's able to accomplish what he wants to. He pulled the troops out, and there's a tentative ceasefire. But there are problems. One problem is that Republicans are highly skeptical that this is going to solve the problems involving ISIS in the region. Mm -hmm. The other is that there could have been war crimes committed in the vacuum like you talked about. So these are still ongoing problems for the president. And I don't think it's going to go away. And there's an image for America as mm -hmm. well, because we were known to be side-by-side yes. uh, -side fighters with the Kurds, and now they're left to kind of fend for themselves. Yeah, since World War II, the relationship has been intact, and now it's more or less been undone with kind of one stroke of the pen. So I think it's something that it's going to have to build new, but it's definitely going to be a continuing churn in the Middle East. Well, let's talk Texas politics and Houston politics. Republican House 
of representatives um, has, uh, the, has said he's not going to run for re-election. Yeah. After recordings of him surfaced, this has been bubbling beneath the surface yes. for a long time, but yes. uh, what does that mean for the GOP in the state of Texas with him stepping down? And he was going after people in his own party. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, he was. It was a pretty ugly tape. A lot of things were said, and I think the fact that it looked like he was coddling up to the right wing of the party made it clear that maybe there's not such a thing as a moderate Republican in the way that they talked about it. So he presented himself one way during the session and ultimately ended up speaking more privately in a different direction. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem for Republicans because a lot of people were named and that was the cutting edge for them and ended up sort of walking away. The real quandary is what the Republicans do next. They're getting fire from all sides. Inside the party, you've got people running against incumbents saying, we need new leadership. The Democrats are charging that Republicans are not able to govern because of this kind of mess. So all in the meantime, we have a Speaker of the House who's basically a lame duck. So how to govern in those circumstances is really a question. Is this going to change anything down the road? I mean, Texas has been a red state for many different reasons on the national level and yeah. in the House districts. Is that going to change anything, you think? You know, my sense is this will be a marginal difference. I think there are a lot of people who are kind of active and really engaged in the politics of the 2020 election. This will be just one more log on the fire for mm -hmm. most of them. I don't think it'll be the issue, but definitely it'll be one issue for a lot of people who look at incumbents and say they're simply not doing their job. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Houston now. Polls have shown the Houston mayor's race uh, shows the mayor with a clear advantage. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, do you see any reason how Mayor Turner could lose this? With Tony Busby still spending lots on TV ads, yeah. I noticed Bill King is sending out information about Tony Busby, about his voting record or lack of a voting yes. record. Saw <laughs> so that he voted twice in like right. nine opportunities to vote. That's great. Low. So anyway, they say, yeah, that's low. But it talks about him just jumping in just to buy the race. Yeah. Uh, any chance that the mayor might lose this going on? I'd say there's a slim chance. Uh, as it is, the mayor's got a pretty sizable turnout machine, and they understand the politics of the city pretty well. So given the way the dynamics typically, typically go in these races, I expect him to not win outright because there's so many of the people in the race who are kind of sapping that support, but in a runoff, I think that he would have the advantage. But like you say, $10 million plus from Tony Busby buys a lot of votes, that buys a lot of eyeballs. So I think it's going to be the case that it'll be close, but I don't think it'll be even as close as it was in 2015. That, that says a lot about our political process, does it not? Yeah. The, the he with the most money wins, whether or not it's because of people who contribute to you or because it's your own money. It's becoming more of an issue. I think a lot of people are self-funding and that's become a problem. But the other hand, you've got a lot of these organizations that are able to generate small dollars to people and that's kind of a grassroots level support that we haven't seen in the you know past decade or so the real battle here is apathy people aren't voting we have early turnout which sees lower than it was in 2015 so the question is how does turnout affect the race the likelihood is a low turnout probably helps the mayor big turnout probably helps Tony Busby because you want to expand the electorate to new people who might see that there's a value in having new vision and then a runoff after that and then who knows after that who knows uh, lots of questions although most of the polls indicate that even with the runoff, the, the mayor would likely win. I think that's point, right. So. Yeah. Well, lots going on. Thank you for coming and help us sort through it all. <laughs> I can't pleasure. imagine how dizzying it is for you in a classroom, <laughs> keeping all this stuff it's straight. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it gives your students something to really be excited about. Absolutely too. right. Doc, always good to see you, sir. You too. You too.